This story has been 30 years in the making. The murder of Daniel Morgan back in 1987 has taken several inquiries and murder investigations and cost approximately £50 million to taxpayers to try to find out the truth. In this most recent inquiry, they have revealed that the Metropolitan Police is institutionally corrupt in relation to covering up and trying to not take responsibility for the mistakes in relation to the murder of Daniel Morgan. Before we speak about the results of the inquiry, I'd like to mention the Metropolitan Police's official statement. They are very dismissive, as expected, and they say that this was 34 years ago, and they have transformed a lot in the homicide and major investigation team. But the report says that this institutional corruption is not historic. They say that it still exists in the Metropolitan Police, and they go on to also say, in the independent panel report, I've seen a lot of different opinions and reports and interpretations of this in the media. I wasn't born when this happened, so I had to watch a lot and listen to a lot and read a lot of information, as I advise yourself to do as well, not just watching this video. That's why I'm going to provide the official independent inquiry report so you can read it for yourself because I don't think any of the media outlets have really covered it in a way that just lets you know the story. Everybody has taken bits from it to put across their political angle but I'm going to try to tell it in a way so you just understand the story and can make your own decision. The murder of Daniel Morgan on the 10th of March 1987 left his wife without a husband and his two children Sarah and Dan without a father. He was killed in the car park of the Golden Lion pub in Sydenham, South East London. He was a private investigator and his business was called Southern Investigations in Thornton Heath and his co-partner was Jonathan Rees. His body was found at 9.40 on the evening and he'd been stabbed with an axe. No one has ever been convicted of the murder but several people have been arrested for responsibility in the long-running investigation. In the report, they cover every single aspect over 30 years, and there's not been a lot of reports, to my knowledge, that have been able to do this. So that is why I think this story stands out particularly for the in-depth nature. They say that in 1987 to 1988, that was when the first murder investigation took place, and it was conducted by the Metropolitan Police. They say in the report that they found multiple failings in the conduct of investigating and the discovery of Daniel Morgan's body. The management and administration of the investigation was poor, they said, and in many respects was not compliant. They said the handling of the murder scene was totally inadequate and it was not searched and left unguarded. There is evidence some of those arrested in connection with the murders on April 1987 may have been alerted of arrests by a leak to the media the day before by Southern Investigations. Southern Investigations did a lot of work for News of the World. A lot of this was not legal and the News of the World was later exposed for hacking phones as well. The inquest into the death of Daniel Morgan took place over eight days. There was a significant number of witnesses and evidence on various matters was heard. And one witness was named Kevin Lennon and he was a former bookkeeper at Southern Investigations and he gave evidence that Jonathan Reese asked him if he knew anyone that would kill Daniel Morgan. This is something that I haven't seen in any publication so far. And they confirmed that Jonathan Rees had told him in 1986 that Catford police officers would carry out the murder of Daniel Morgan or they could arrange it and that it would take place within the jurisdiction of Catford police station. He also said that DS Sidney Fillory was quite aware that Daniel would be murdered and Jonathan Rees told him that DS Fillory would retire from the police and replace Daniel Morgan at Southern Investigations after. Despite this, the coroner inaccurately said that he heard no evidence whatsoever that said there was any police involvement, and he said no stone was left unturned. The jury, on April the 25th, 1988, delivered a verdict of unlawful killing. The second investigation took place at the hands of Hampshire Police, after they found so many faults in the first one. The Hampshire Police Inquiry said that there was circumstantial evidence to implicate Jonathan Rees and Paul Goodridge, who was a business associate and the last person to see Daniel Morgan alive. They said there was no evidence to implicate any police officer or the police in general. The report says that this was not true and there was significant evidence that contradicted this. They said that the Metropolitan Police and Hampshire Police Complaints Authority to hide the truth from Daniel Morgan's family and from the public in general as well. 
Following the death of Daniel Morgan, DS Sidney Fillory and Jonathan Rees became partners at Southern Investigations, as one of the original witnesses had said. During Operation Nigeria slash Two Bridges, evidence emerged of a conspiracy to plant Class A drugs on the wife of a client of a commercial law firm. This was in order to have her arrested and to strengthen the client's position in an ongoing custody battle. The disclosure was necessary, they said, during the investigation and the prosecution was told that the intelligence gathering exercise had been terminated and Jonathan Reese, DC, Austin Warns and Simon James, the husband of the woman in question, were convicted of perverting the course of justice in this case. So that was a previous example of Jonathan Reese committing crime and also to try to do this for his investigation service. In the year 2000, they did another review on the murder and they reported in October 2000 that he made 80 recommendations and this was in relation to both of the previous murder investigations. A reinvestigation of the Daniel Morgan murder began in 2001 and it comprised of two sides, a covert operation and an overt investigation established in May 2002. The two sides ran parallel, they said, until after May 2002 as Ablard 1 and Morgan 2. The same people were investigated in this investigation as well. Jonathan Reese, Glenn Vian, Gary Vian and former DS Sidney Fillory and James Cook. The third investigation was one of the most expensive and it used a lot of resources and the Metropolitan Police had conducted it. This cost in excess of £2 million. However, despite extensive attempts to secure information and evidence, the only evidence they could relate to were the efforts of James Cook to establish an alibi for the night of the murder. They put some of the officers under investigation and also surveillance as well and various methods were used to try to gather information about them working with the News of the World at the time, which was the newspaper. The Crown Prosecution Service in 2012 said there was not enough evidence to bring any charges against Jonathan Rees or DS Fillory. Alex Marunuk, who worked for the News of the World, and Glenn Mulcair, who was involved in the phone hacking scandal earlier on. They said one of the mistakes in the first report was they said that Sidney Fillory had not been involved in the first investigation. They said that it inaccurately described the Hampshire Police Complaints Authority investigation as an independent investigation and failed to examine much of the documentation that showed there was involvement from the Metropolitan Police. The reports from Two Bridges said that they gave the family of Daniel Morgan the impression that a third investigation of the murder had taken place and this was not the case, although more information had been gained, but they didn't make any further progress in solving the case. In 2006, there was emergence of a new witness. A further investigation into the murder named Ablard II was established and DCS David Cook, who was a full-time second commandment for the Serious Crime Agency, was appointed as the senior investigator in the case. The Ablard II investigation was protracted, they said, and lengthy and involved multiple investigative strands and an extensive forensic review and reconstruction of the murder, following extensive investigations and the identification of further witnesses. They charged Jonathan Rees, James Cook, Glenn Vian and Gary Vian with the murder of Daniel Morgan. Former DS Sidney Fillory was charged with perverting the course of justice. The Ablard II investigation made use of Serious Organised Crime and Police Act 2005 that permitted the debriefing of witnesses as assisting offenders and three witnesses were debriefed under the new legislation and ultimately their credibility was questioned. Allegations of police misconduct of many different kinds by different officers of the Metropolitan Police have been made over the years. And in relation to the summary from 1987 to 2021 in the report, they said that from the outset there has been allegations that there was involved in murder and the corruption by the police somehow played a part who committed it from being brought to justice in 2011. The Metropolitan Police publicly admitted for the first time that corruption had been a factor in the failure of the first investigation. There was evidence of a culture within the Metropolitan Police in 1987 that permitted the very close association close to it as well and also individuals linked to crime. There is extensive evidence of police officers meeting DS Sidney Fillory, Jonathan Reese, and, and others and some had been arrested and continued to be suspects.
for the murder of Daniel Morgan. There is no evidence that the investigation of Daniel Morgan was discussed on some of these occasions and that Jonathan Reese used social interactions to obtain information about the investigation. There had been indications since 1987 that Daniel Morgan was going to report about police corruption and he was going to sell a story about corruption to the media. The nature of that corruption has never been established and there has been a number of possibilities. Some of them were never fully examined, they say in the inquiry, and there was a connection between the recovery by Daniel Morgan of a Range Rover from Malta in 1987 and a major fraud investigation being conducted by West Yorkshire Police. It's very possible that local officers involved identified lucrative corrupt practices such as selling confidential information, assisting criminals with inside police information and also moonlighting throughout their police careers because their pensions were under threat. The evidence supporting the theory as why Daniel Morgan was involved in revealing this corruption was never investigated. In the years following his murder, several of the police connected to Daniel Morgan's circles and businesses were investigated and convicted of serious crime. DS Sidney Fillory was a Freemason and became master of two different lodges in 1993 and 1992. Ten police officers who were prominent in the Daniel Morgan investigation were Freemasons as well. Investigating officers entertained doubts as to whether Masonic loyalties that Freemasons are sworn to uphold might have conflicted with what the police officers owe to each other. And this is something that I've not seen in any of the publications by any of the press. Nobody has mentioned the fact that every single person in this was a member of the Freemasons. This isn't a conspiracy, this is a fact. They openly say in the report that this was common knowledge. So what I don't get is why all of these different publications have just told you what they want to tell you and their version of events, but not one of them has mentioned the fact that this involved 10 Freemasons and one of them was a Grandmaster. They go on to say in the report that policing has been a profession they understand that officers stand together and they call it the blue wall. The blue wall existed to enable the support and the fight against crime. Those working in policing are often in a unique position to bring evidence of wrongdoing by colleagues to their superiors. However, in some circumstances, police officers have sought to hide this wrongdoing and also look down on people that don't. And there is a brilliant example that I covered on the channel recently of four police officers that were convicted of doing exactly this. One of them beat somebody up and then all four of them covered it up. And this was only a couple of months ago and it was a different police force as well. So it shows that there is definitely a problem and it still exists as well where they will cover up for each other. And in relation to who the Freemasons are and what they do, it's very difficult to be sure. They say that they do a lot of charity work and they're hundreds of years old and they've got a lot of history and they do a lot of good things to the community. But critics would say that they control a lot of aspects of society. And very recently in 2018, the former chair of the Police Federation, Steve White, said that all the members of the police federation that are against progression in the police force are actually Freemasons. He said a lot of them are blocking reforms to policing in relation to hiring more women and also black and ethnic minority police officers. So God knows why this officer feels like that is the case, but obviously that is supported by saying that there is no women in the Freemasons and I think they may have started to take some women on but for hundreds of years there has been no women at all and there are rules about Freemasonry where when they are there they do not discuss religion or politics but every single one of them has a massive input in both of them areas. The leader of the Grand Lodge of Freemasons in England said that this was not the case and they were not trying to stop any reform or having any influence on the policing system. So what a big coincidence that several officers involved in the case closely were Freemasons and a former police federation officer saying that Freemasons influenced the police force. So again, I don't know much about it. I'm going to have to research some more on Freemasonry and also try and maybe do a documentary. I might try to contact them and try to find out what they have to say about this. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Rest in peace to Daniel Morgan and my condolences to his family. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and check out our website at Scar City Studios. Peace.